thanks for staying with Caribbean Focus TV. For those of you who are just tuning in or just watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you could get all the videos. Hit the notification bell because you know that's what, how you're gonna get your you're gonna get your your new content. Um, so yes, we are back with Miss Feline Joseph. Again, thank you for being here, first Feline. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so Miss Joseph, before the break, we mentioned book number two, right? Yes, yes, I did have book number two. Awesome. So uh -huh. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna ask you. So, can you please tell the viewers the name of your second book of what it's all about? I know you said it was a children's book, and I'm mm -hmm. excited to hear what it's all about and the name. Hmm. Okay. Um. So my second book is a children's book, as I said, and it's called My Wonderful Mama. So the book is about Farah and her mama, where she teaches her, she plays with her, she passionately tells her stories with her, she reads to her, she cooks and they learn things together. So that's the main um that's the main gist of the story from that book. So I think it's only fair to tell you that Farah, as in my nickname. Okay. So um I would like to um I like um to read pages one and six. I want to read. I want you to read pages page one, and I'm going to read page six. And I would like you to um elaborate on it. So I'm going to read page. Um, you're going to read page one first, please. Okay. So can you do that for me? I can. What's so page one? Sorry, guys. I don't have it with me yet. Um, but I have on my phone. So it says, the first page, hello, my name is Farah, and this book is all about my mommy. Okay, so let's, let's do that number one first. So you said, my name is Farah. So I heard you mention earlier that you're, you are Farah. Okay, you are the Farah they're talking about. So how did you get the name Farah, and how did it come about? Oh, that's great, Manny. Um, everybody who knows me back home, my immediate family and friends, they call me Pharaoh. Um, this name was taken from one of my eldest cousin, which her real name is Pharaoh Lyons, from from the village of Library. I think my dad said my dad's first cousin, and they took this name from her. So from birth, I'm being called Farah, but at school, my name is Philin. So this is like me in the book talking about my wonderful mama awesome. as for my nickname. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, okay, so I am going to read page number six. And this one really caught my eye and I, I just, I love it. So let me read it. It says, worry about me playing alone with friends too. Mommy says we may look a bit different in color, but we are still very special. Could you please elaborate on that? I think I, I get the gist, but could you please tell the viewers what you meant by that statement, by that whole page right here? Okay. So as I said, this book is about Farah and her mama, her mother teaching her about various things, cooking, doing the chores, playing, eating together. And playing involves, of course, not just the two of them. Of course, she'll be playing with her friends too. So this part, I specifically chose it in that way to say such. When Farah plays with her friends, of course, her friends come from different backgrounds and denomination. And we know there's a stigma in the black community, especially for women or men of color and children of color. So, you know, many times the parents do not feel comfortable as well, um, letting the children play with um, 
or the children from other denomination. And therefore, she, this mommy was being very particular, very concerned about her child and what's going to happen. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. I know nowadays, as you know, there's so much going on with, you know, in, in the black communities and everything. And, you know, children are taught. They, they don't just learn things they're taught. So um, it's amazing that you put that picture there where children of different backgrounds, you know, are holding each other's hand because, you know, love is the thing that conquers everything. So I am happy. I really love that page. You understand? Thank so um, I also wanted to say, so Fonlin, you had just published an inspirational book and we just looked at it earlier. What motivated you? you know, to write the children's book. And I know you mentioned it earlier, maybe, but just give me the gist of it. What motivated you to really get into, after writing an inspirational book, writing a children's book as well? Well, as I said, um, initially, this was my plan from the start, to write children's book instead of, you know, anything else. This was my initial plan, just because I'm used to always writing about children, as I said, um, in, in, in the preschool, I write about their individuality, their um, assessment, their behavior, and I have to report back to the parents at the end of the term and year and to, to, the, to the principal. So I'm used to writing about them. I know them in and out. So this was my initial plan to write during COVID time. But then again, we were first faced with the pandemic so therefore I saw it fitting just to have an inspirational book first because this was happening at this pres at present, you know, at the time. But um, yeah. so immediately I started um, after the inspiration book, I started writing about my children's book, which was my first perspective. Awesome. So I, I guess you saw a bigger need for you to write the inspirational book to help other people as it could yes. with the pandemic, right? At the time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how long have you been a preschool teacher and what drove you to work with kids? Mm. I remember in our conversation, you mentioned something about, you know, you always, you know, you know, loving kids. So, I mean, what was your inspiration? How long have you been that, the, sorry, a preschool teacher and what drove you to work with kids? Wow. Mm, if I'm really telling the truth, which I love doing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I love doing pretty much my whole life growing up, I've been raised in practically as a child, sort of like raising part of my siblings. This is where for me it really started. I've got many siblings, both by my mom and my dad's side. And of course, I'm the second of my mom's children. So you I can remember imagine. you taking the lead in, in, um, in taking care of your brothers. I remember that very well. That's right. So I started from, from inception when they were born. Um, I, I changed the diapers. I have to feed them. And, you know, even if you're not happy. Can you hear me? Even if you're not happy about that sometimes, but I had to do it. Uh, so therefore, I, I develop a love for children. And it's like I love taking care of them. I love keeping everything nice and neat you know for them and around them so um from there from there i um later on i got the opportunity as i said to go to london and i did just that or similar to that i had a babysitting job initially and this is where it all started from my babysitting job i said okay why not i'm there as a visitor i'm not gonna overstay so why don't i go to school so i went to college i did my first early years care and education and vq too at the time and this is where it all started so i had a bit of experience from home and i never awesome wow you got a lot of uh, underneath your belt girl <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So um, obviously you have a love for kids. We can see that you have a love for kids and because of your background, the way that you were brought up. So um, yes. I understand you have kids of your own. How many you have? How many do you have? And what are the thoughts on your children's book? What are they saying about it? Uh, thank you for that. I've got two children. I've got two boys, precisely two teenage boys. One just in 18 so I came just to an 18 and 
Micah is going to be 16 in a few months' time. And of course, they're, they're very happy and excited that their mama has written not just one, but two books. And I'm getting, um, I've been getting a lot, of, a lot of love, a lot of feedback from them. Um, they're very um, happy. And uh, they, they, they share my book with their friends. They talk about it. And in fact, they, they have the book. They bought it. And um, they actually use it to read and to inspire themselves as well. So especially my, my eldest son, he's very, he's told me, mom, I'm very proud of you, what you've ach- achieved in, <laughs> in such a um, short space of time. And therefore I get enough support from them. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I know children can be so inspiriting because I remember when I was writing my book as well, my son was so excited and he just really loved the fact that I have published a book, you know, the thing about the boys love their mama. So they, he was just so excited, okay? So I could relate to what you say. So, um, yeah, so um, I also um, wanted to ask you, Feline. So um, I understand that... Um, mm-hmm. You have, have been through many trials in life, right? So um, these past few years, what, was, what are some of the biggest challenges you face in juggling your job as a mother and wife, a preschool teacher, and also writing a book? Uh, of course, um, in everything, there are trials, I can safely say, maybe for most of us, if not all. Um, as I say, it's being a wife, being a mother of two teenage boys, having a full-time job and working with children, especially the earlier sector, um, it's not um, it's not very easy. But I'm someone that's very organized and um, particular when it comes to I don't know the family. I. I know how to how to deal with it, how to compose myself. And for writing for me, it's like because I've been doing it for so long. Um, juggling in between have never really been an issue, although it takes time. So of course I have I've had sleepless nights right until daybreak, stopping at six, three a.m., six a.m. just to quickly shower and then head back to work. Um, it was never an issue for me. But of course, it is challenging. And if you're not focused, um, you can lose your perspective when it comes to the family, juggling life with family and taking care of the kids. But kind of lucky for me, my children, I know they have me all the time, um, but I still have to do them remotely. So I kind of still doing my job, but it's slightly a bit different yeah so I manage in every case yeah. you have to continue your mommy duties right that's right that's right <laughs> okay so let's move on to another question that i needed to ask you um uh what are parents saying about this children book because i read the book and it is actually an amazing book what are parents saying about the book a few parents have seen it and they said it's um um earlier actually about the first one but we've concentrated on the second one right now. Lots of good message. But that second one is the same thing. It's the same thing. I've got, got lots of it from there. And as I say, I'm still trying to bring it out and to show as model. But the feedback initially had been very good. Um, some some parents oh, have exactly. even classified it as a must quote, must read at the top. Which, um, that's how fascinating and interesting it is, I guess, to them, which I'm thankful about. So it has really been a great inspiration for for me and, of course, for them as well. The feedback has been great. Right. So do you have more books in the works, Feline? In fact, I have a couple of books in the works. Oh, you're um, a busy woman. <laughs> another, another, um, children's uh, animal picture book. Okay. It's almost done. I just need the illustration. And okay. also I'm working on a teenage book. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So um, I know this is a bit personal, right? So what do you think your late father, and I know him personally, he was such an amazing man and I loved him. What do you think your great, your late father would have, um, would have said about the book, about the book, about your accomplishments? Well, um, 
Of course, my little dad has has been gone for over 13 years now. And of course, we were very close. He practically raised me all my teenage life. And of course, if he was there, he would have been, though he would have been blind, he would have been very inspired, very emotional. And of course, um, he would have given me all the support and all of his kind and wise words as he usually does. I can actually hear him say that I've, you've made me proud, Farah, as he calls me, my nickname, as I said earlier. You've actually made me proud and he loved using those words. I can go now, I can die now. You've made me proud because coming from UK over the years, coming to him, these were the words you used to tell me how I've taken care of myself, how strong that I am. So for sure, I would have gotten lots of inspiration and blessing from him. Knowing him, if he was there, I could see that big smile on his face. I could see that big smile on his face. Wow, Colin. Now the million dollar question. (laughs) What's next for you as an author? Where do you see yourself in the next two, maybe five, maybe even 10 years? Hmm. It's a good one. Um, I would like to say I'll continue. I'd like to continue my writing. As I say, I've got two more books on the way. Should be out pretty soon, hopefully. Um, but for the next, I'm looking for the next three years to five years. I'm actually looking into what I called copywriting. I've looked at this for a while now and I've seen a few avenues where it can lend me some good paying jobs. So um, this is my next course of action for the next few years at least, but continuing my book as well. So copywriting, you know what? Wow. Wow. You know what? It's a good dream to act on what you want to accomplish and we can sell it clearly see you doing that with your two books and all everything that you ha- you have in the works and what your vision what your plan is for what you need to do so with the book what you have failed and what, what, with my, my wonderful mama this is such a great start for you falling and i have no doubt that you thank have you so amazing much. things so we thank you for thank being you. here to share your, your work accomplishments i am so proud of you my friend and i'm super excited to see what the future thank you <laughs> keep up thank you so much my friend. friend keep up the good work keep the pen to the paper continue to inspire and motivate others thank you so much again for being with us and this right here is gonna bring us to the end of our interview it was a pleasure pleasure has been mine as well thank you so much for having me I enjoyed it. A little bit nervous. Wait to be back. <laughs> awesome. We never know the talents we have in our own communities, in our own backyards. There are so many of us who come from nothing and are doing phenomenal things with our lives. So many of us have inspiring stories, have goals and dreams. We are quietly fulfilling them one step at a time, one breath at a time, one penny at a time. We keep pushing no matter how many times we've fallen. Some dreams are recognized faster than others. Sometimes we just need a start, someone to see us, someone to believe in us. Why don't you let Caribbean Focus TV give you that start? You can visit our website on www.caribbeanfocus.tv to contact us and learn more about us and what we do. Once again, thank you so much for being Caribbean Focus TV. Don't forget to follow us on the different social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and hit the subscribe button on your YouTube channel, y'all. This is your host, Cindy Placid. Enjoy what is left of your day, and remember to stay focused. See you soon. Yeah, yeah, it's the Caribbean queen, Alison Hines. And you know what? You're watching Caribbean Focus TV. You know how we do. Roll, roll it, gal, roll it, gal, rah.